What's going on guys? This is Brandon from Walker's Woodworks again. Today I have another shop project for you. Just a quick little DIY router sled. Uh, it comes in really handy for flattening bigger slabs, tabletops, stuff like that you can't fit through your normal planer. If you want to stick around, I'll show you how I made mine and how to use it. So for shop projects like this, I usually use three quarter inch plywood. I've also used MDF and uh, melamine. They work just fine for this kind of stuff too. The first thing I want to do is get a measurement on the base of my router. That way I know how big to make the sled itself. Once I had my measurement of my base, I added an inch and a half to allow for the sides and about an eighth inch just to allow for a little bit of free movement so the router wouldn't get squeezed between the rails. I set the fence on my table saw as seven and five eighths and this first cut you make will be the bottom of the sled. Oh yeah, this sled's gonna be 48 inches. I guess I should have mentioned that in the beginning, but you could use this same process to make pretty much any size sled. Then I'm gonna cut the rails. I just slid my table saw fence over to two inches and cut two strips. I decided to use pocket holes to attach the rails. It's just the fastest, easiest way. The Craig jig has this cool little gauge on the side. So you set it to the thickness of material you're using. And for me, that was three quarters of an inch. Nope, nope. Oh, oh, okay, there we go. Cool thing I learned is some old sanding sponges are the same size as your Craig jig, so you can set them there and it'll keep your piece level when you clamp it down. Then I moved on to drilling all the holes in the side rails. Uh, my Craig jig's a little bit different because I upgraded the clamp on it. This one's from Armor Tool, it's a self-adjusting clamp and it's really a lot faster than the stock clamp. If you guys are interested in this or any other tools I use in this video, I'll leave links down in the description below for everything. Then it was time to attach the rail, so I just used some wood glue for the sides and then made sure to clamp it down nice and straight and put in some screws. Once I had it all put together, I had to make a mark for where the channel was gonna be in the bottom of the sled for the bit to go through. You can see I just put my pencil in and drug it down the length of the sled with the router. This actually was a really effective way. Then I had to cut it out, so I drilled a pilot hole and then started cutting it out with my jigsaw. In these parts, I just try to stay as close to the line I drew as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect because there's no referencing off this. It's just to have a clearance area for the bit to go through the sled. The ends were a little bit tricky, but I just made some relief cuts until I could get my blade turned to go the opposite direction. This could also have been achieved with another pilot hole. Once I was cutting out of the way, I put my router back on the sled just to make sure it fit and that the bit was going to clear everything. Anytime I do any jigs or sleds, I highly recommend using paste wax. Putting a nice coat of this stuff on will actually make everything slide and move a lot easier. Really easy to apply, you just put some on a rag and then wipe it on the wood. Get a nice layer on there and then you let it dry for about 5-10 minutes. Then you go back with a dry rag and kind of buff off any of the excess and you'll be left with a nice smooth finish. I use this stuff on all my power tools as well that have beds such as my table saw, joiner, planer. Just makes everything slide a lot easier as you can see there. Ever since I got my branding iron, I'm kind of obsessed with just pretty much branding everything in my shop. So there you go. So I have this walnut slab that's clearly not flat. Um, so we're gonna fix that with the router sled. Whenever I do this, I always flip it to where the cup side is 
downward. Um, that way, when you put your sled across, you put your runners on each side, sled across, and it just takes off the high spot in the middle. And then when that's done, you can flip the slab over, do the same thing, it'll take off the outsides. And when you're done, you'll have a completely flat slab to work with. So I'll show you how it's done. Once you have your rails all set up and everything's nice and straight, just adjust your router down to the lowest point on your slab. You don't want to take off more than about an eighth inch or so depending on the bit you're using. This bit I'm using is a monotool bit from Tools Today. It'll actually take off almost a quarter inch, but I probably wouldn't recommend doing that much at once. So you're just going to cut one way depending on which way your bit spins. Here you can see as I pull it towards me it's cutting and then I swipe it back across the slab without moving my sled. Once you have it back across, then you move it just a little bit and then you continue to take swipes. If you do cut the wrong way, a lot of times you'll get tear out. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. It is time consuming, but I prefer to do as much as I can to my projects myself, and I kind of like it. I typically do this outside because it is super messy, but uh, for video's sake and for you guys, I decided to do one in my shop. This is a nice black walnut slab. You can see how flat it made it. You'll just have some tool marks that are easily sanded off. And you can flip this over and flatten the other side and then you should be good to go. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you liked that video, I have another one queued up for you in the corner that you probably like as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I'd appreciate it if you did that. Like, comment, share, all that stuff. Hit that notification bell so you get notified when I drop new videos. I'll see you guys on the next one.